within African-based spirituality, our orthodoxy is born out of an understanding of the natural world. And shamanism in its, in its best definition is the ability to interact with the natural world. And now, it's my honor to introduce you to Louisa Tisch. Louisa Tisch is an activist and artist, a writer, storyteller, and spiritual guidance counselor. She is the author of Jambalaya, the natural woman's book of personal charms and practical rituals. It's a women's spirituality classic. Her most recent work, On Holy Ground, Commitment and Devotion to Sacred Land is co-authored with Hawaiian kahuna Leilani Byerly. Louisa Tish is internationally known for her original renditions of African, African African-American, and African-Caribbean folktales. Ye Ye, as she's known, teaches online courses and offers a two-year certificate program in the Jambalaya Spirit Works. She facilitates conferences, offers weekend intensives, and sacred site retreats as well. Welcome, Louisa. Uh, Alafia. I always begin by saying Alafia because it is a Yoruba greeting wherein I am asking that you have good health and be at peace with your neighbor. And your response is Sha Alafia Ni which means that you give the same blessing back to me. So I always like to begin by asking people to take a breath, take a deep breath and let out a sigh. (sighs) And feel how relaxing that is. That is how relaxed I would like you to be throughout this presentation, because that level of relaxation is the first step in where we want to go. (sighs) Ibashe, Ibashe, Ibababa, I baye ye, I ba she. Ah, I ba she, I ba she o, I ba ba ba, I baye ye, I ba she. This is an all-purpose Yoruba chant that was taught to me by one of my elders. And we use it for all kinds of things. We use it for invoking the directions, for uh, welcoming ancestors, for blessing the land, and we can use it for the harvest. This, This chant is done with a body prayer, with a with a, a, a movement wherein the person makes a full circle with their arms, makes an offering, bows down to the earth, reaches up to the sky, and then opens our hearts to everything on the horizon. So if you can envision a circle with an equal arm cross and put yourself right in the middle of the intersection. And when you do this chant, what you are saying is, Ibashe is respect to the spirit of the power. To say Ibashe O is to add feeling. Ibababa is respect to fall the sky. Ibayeye is respect to Mother Earth. And Ibashe with the arms extended out and heart open 
is to everything on the horizon. So by doing this, we put ourselves in the center of the divining tray. We are saluting six directions, north, south, east, and west, above and below. And we are asking that the will of heaven come down through us and the work of earth come up through us and meet in our hearts. And then we reach out and we impact everything that is around us as well as to bring all of that energy and all of that blessing to us. When you are in the center of the tray, you can receive energy from every direction and from everything on this planet. Take a deep breath and relax. This is a very, very important thing, not only to understand intellectually, but to be able to feel because it is at the heart of and is essentially the real power of African-based uh, shamanism. It is the natural path to shamanic power. And oftentimes, you know, the word shaman uh, comes from, <clears throat> from, from Mongolian culture and it has been used in a number of ways. And sometimes people try to separate uh, shamanism from uh, the priesthood because the word priesthood implies a certain orthodoxy. But within African-based spirituality, our orthodoxy is born out of an understanding of the natural world. And shamanism in its, in its best definition is the ability to interact with the natural world. So we have a number of beliefs, the basic one being that all of nature is alive at different levels of existence, that there are ways for us to communicate with all of nature, that all of nature is both receptive to hearing us and responsive to the things that we say to it. So it is possible to recognize uh, petition nature, receive information from nature, and carry out the will of heaven through an interaction with nature. This is done in a number of ways. This is done through meditation, through sitting quietly someplace in nature. It is done through concentration and contemplation that is um, regarding a particular thing in a place in nature or in a sacred place and waiting to hear what instruction uh, you receive uh, it is done through divination, where we use natural objects to query the spirit world. And based on the responses that we get, we then perform the rituals and do the enactments based on, um, on what, was, what was given to us. And then, of course, there's embodiment on different levels, which involves... Um, the making of ceremonial clothes, the playing of drums, specific kind of dances, doing rituals out in nature. And in the traditions of the African diaspora, the energy of heaven and earth passes through you from the long line of ancestors that led to you being who you are and what you have and we all, the ancestors and us who are in the present, we all have a relationship to various aspects of nature. And 
finding that relationship to various aspects of nature is where you make contact with your shamanic power. It's very interesting to me that in the 35 years that I've been uh, doing workshops and presentations, I can walk in a room and know, like in the first 10 minutes, how many mermaids are in the room, okay? Because uh, I'm a child of the river, of the water spirits, and I can feel other water beings and they feel me intently, you know? Um, so sometimes if you do not have a divination system that helps you to outline it, you can find out where your power is by putting yourself in different places in nature and taking note about what relaxes you, what cleanses you, what empowers you, okay? So being a child of the water spirits, I can always go to the water, to the river, to the lake, to the ocean, and be released, relieved, refreshed, and empowered. And this is such a strong thing, especially uh, in Africa, that uh, the women in Senegal have a tradition of dressing in very luminous white gauze uh, robes and going down to Pink Lake, which is called Pink Lake because the coral in it is so brilliant that it can be seen from outer space. And they lay on the beach and just stare into the water. Uh, in East Africa, in Zimbabwe, there is a tradition called uh, gazing the orange moon, which is this October full moon that is orange and red, and medicine women there go and look at the reflection of the moon in the river, and that reflection in the water tells them which herbs to pick for the people that they are healing. Similarly, a person who is about to undertake an energetic enterprise would benefit from sitting down outside, making a small fire and meditating on that flame. That will help to, um, to strengthen you, okay? to give you vigor. In fact, I'm gonna, I hope he's still around to hear me, but um, I used to interact with um, the man who did, he was a Kiva builder. And um, he built a Kiva in my backyard years ago. And it started out with him just sitting down, staring at a fire, and then he started moving rocks. And he kept returning, skip. His name was Skip, and Skip kept returning to the fire, and he would sit there and look at the fire and get up and move some more rocks. Before it was over, the kiva was built, okay? When it comes to being uh, an earth person, one of the most wonderful things you can do is go sit in the forest, sit under a tree, know that the intelligence in that tree has watched human behavior for as old as it is and even older because it, it has ancestors also. And if you can relax yourself and be open to receiving that energy, the tree will tell you what you need to know. We have sacred trees, everybody actually, has sacred trees. The power of the tree is very, very well recognized in every tradition in the world. And another thing that is wonderful is to go and stand in 
a gust of wind and allow that wind to clean you and inspire you, okay? Uh, there's a big fire going on in California uh, at this time in October, and I've been in touch with people in my circle of kinship who are rainmakers, okay? We have a relationship to the sky and we put ourselves in accord with the moisture and ask the moisture in our bodies to connect with the moisture in the clouds and, and we, ask for, um, we ask for rain. One of the priestesses, Iai Amoke, sent me an email this morning telling me that she had gone to the highest hill in her area and she spoke with the great mother and asked that, you know, all of the pain and suffering from this be cleaned away. And so you can begin to feel your element or uh, make contact with the element that you need at that time with these simple things that I just named, just allowing yourself to relax, to put yourself in the center of the tray, to recognize every direction and every element and open yourself to receiving that level of information. And it, and you know, and they, they work in conjunction uh, with visualization so that even if you can't make it to the ocean, you can look at a picture of the ocean. You can listen to the sound of the ocean roaring and your energy body will still respond because you're never so far away from the ocean anyway. The whole planet is covered in that salt water. Uh, your body is 75% water. You came into the world in the salt water belly of your mother and every, every meal that you have, there is moisture. So water is always moving through you and you can always uh, attach to that. The same is true with air, the same is true with earth through embodiment, and, um, and the same is true uh, with fire because of courage. <laughs> <laughs>